Next we're going to prepare our bias binding which will be used to cover all of the raw edges on our seams. This I think gives your bag a Cadillac finish when you're done and it just makes everything look really nice and professional. All of my patterns are designed so that you make your own bias binding so that your binding exactly matches the rest of the fabric used on your bag. And I have some tips on that that when we start doing the binding I'll share with you but let's start by learning how to make it. We always start with a square and the size of the square is determined by the final amount that you need. So the pattern will tell you exactly what size to cut that. You're going to cut your square from corner to corner diagonally so that you have two triangles of fabric. And then you're going to join those together on the bias or on the straight grain edges so that your bias edges are on the outside. The easiest way I've learned to do this is to take one triangle and turn it so that I have a mountain. So you've got your peak of your mountain, your ground down here. And then I take the other one and I make a valley. So I've got it coming down this way so that I can set those next to each other and I have what will be a long parallelogram. I'm going to take my valley and fold it over on top of my mountain so that I've got those two edges together and then I'm going to turn it. And then I learned this in a class that I taught in Chicago last year and the, the lady said, and then you're going to sew across the waist, not up the crotch, which was kind of a funny way to put it, but I've remembered it and it always makes me know exactly where my seam needs to be. So we're going across the, the waist. So we're going to line these up so that we've got our little dog ears on each end. And the, the goal is that when we sew a quarter inch seam here, we're ending and starting, starting and ending right at where our cleavage is on each end. If you want to mark a quarter inch line on there to get you going, that's not cheating at all. But after you've done this a few times, it's going to be really easy to get that right where it needs to be. So I'll just put a few pins in there. I'll take that to my sewing machine. I'll sew my quarter inch seam and then I'll have my pieces joined. And then we're going to have what looks like this. So we've got our seam. We're going to press that seam open and then we're ready to cut our strips from it. Now this isn't too terribly big of a piece. We could easily lay our ruler on here and cut our strips, but sometimes you're using a much bigger piece. And so here's a little trick that I can share with you. If you take your sides and fold them over so that you've got this going right along your seam and you've got a nice straight line down at the bottom and then bring your other side over and fold it so that it's following the seam and you've got a nice straight line at the top, you end up with a much smaller piece to cut your strips from. And so if you're in, at a class and you're trying to do this and you've got limited space, that's a nice way to be able to cut your bias strips without taking up a lot of table room. This is one of my favorite rulers to use for cutting binding. It's the Creative Grids Quick Trim and Circle Ruler XL. And what I love about it is it's exactly four and a half inches wide. I like to cut my bindings at two and a quarter. So two and a quarter times two is four and a half. If I lay this on here and cut, I get two strips width cut right at once. I can then slide it down so that the white line that delineates the middle, which is two and a quarter, is right at the edge of my fabric. And I can cut that and I'll have two strips cut. Then I scoot it up, cut two more strips, and then I'm ready to join those to make a continuous piece of binding. One question I get asked a lot is don't you do it where you mark the lines on it and you sew the edges and then you can cut it out with scissors. I used to do bindings that way and I found it was much harder to get really even strips than when I'm cutting all my strips individually with the rotary cutter. So I prefer this method but if you're used to using that method it's certainly a method that would work as well. So when we're ready to join our ends, it's going to be kind of the same tip that we had for joining our two triangles. We're going to take one piece. What I usually do is I lay these out so that's how I want it to look when it's done. I lay them out so that it's going to be how it is finished. And then I just fold one piece over onto the other. I make sure that my cleavage on each side is right where my quarter inch seam is going to be. I sew across that with a quarter inch seam and then I press my seam open. I'll trim any dog ears and then I've got a long piece of binding ready to go. I'll usually then just take my binding and roll it up 
and set it aside so it's ready to go when we're ready to bind our bag. Let's move on next to pockets. Thank you.